then let's talk a bit about Michael a bit about the festival theater then mm -hmm. uh, a theater which its bones are very strong right? yes its yeah. rhythms yeah. are very strong yeah there is no black box yeah so how do you that's a structure of a theater you cannot change which is beautiful and resonant yeah. how do you dance with that I think I think that the, back to the old principle that the first thing you do is you really understand the space so how do you understand the festival I, space? Then? Well, I think it's, 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 you go literally, okay, back in history, first of all, to what was Guthrie trying to achieve, which was in a sense, you know, literally presenting the world, not representing the world, right? Because it's, it's pushed that show out to the point where audiences feel they're actually able to kind of touch the show. Whereas, I mean, a proscenium stage is representational. You're, you're, you're watching sort of through a imaginary fourth wall. Um, and I think that when you understand that the stage can actually support an amazing sort of what I would call variety of approaches. I mean, in other words, rather than looking at it, the old glass half full, glass half empty, you don't look at it and go, oh, oh, gee, I can't do this on that stage. You go, ah, but if I take my, my basic idea, I can, I can sort of, what would you call it, meld the nature of the space with the direction I'm going and come up with a solution. Because... It's the old joke about, you know, that there, what is it? There's no problems. There's only opportunities for solutions. Can you and give me a specific on that? Because I, I hear the outside of the idea. Yeah, and I'm nodding well, my I head, think, but okay. how, how would it work in one specific I, instance? I think, I think the point is that, that uh, if you take an extreme point of view that you're trying to cover up what's there, and this is, this is, this is a, a tendency that's happened in the last years of, of you tend to try to cr create uh, a situation where you're saying, I don't, not that I don't like this space, but I can make this space work better if I cover up what it is. Uh, and, you know, you put a full cladding on the, on the rear wall and you put a full deck and so forth and so on. The question remains, okay, what are you, what are you really trying to do? Because often what you end up doing is inadvertently turning it into a, a, a sort of a pseudo proscenium mm -hmm. because you're, you're creating a world. Whereas if you look at the, the possibilities of creating that sort of island of that world and you work with the notion that the back wall can become fairly neutral and you use elements, I mean, whether they be costumes, props, uh, minimalized set, whatever, and especially light, that, that establishes a world where the audience go, yeah, I, I can relate to that. So you're I saying the festival theater works basically as an island in the midst of this structure that, on which the play is presented yeah. and the back entrances are secondary and the, well, the, the the back the back wall is 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 neutral but supportive i mean in many ways i mean the the the, the construction of the balcony with the the steps and so forth and so on is is a world but i think it's important that people understand the bones of yeah and you see i think the that the theater how it works the key, the key in my opinion is that Everyone? using Varied, I mean, varying the composition of the lighting to, I mean, in the classic Shakespeare, which has, you know, sort of 25 scenes, uh, there's a couple of principles involved. One is that you, you change the location by changing the key direction of the light. So that, for example, if the first scene is keyed from up left, uh, then the next scene you do a key from down right or you use like a window element from down left for the next scene, you put in leaf break up for the next scene. You, you, you work with texture, direction, and so on. And you can move the space. I mean, when I say move the space, you can move the audience's perception of the space uh, from place to place to place to place to place using just the lighting. And as long as you honor that original, again, intention of the space, which is that it's, it's free flowing, it's not so if you know a scene ends, you go to black, you have little sort of scurry, scurry, scurry noises, noises, and then the lights come up again, which actually interrupts the flow of the show. You can you can do sort of dipping down to come up to a new composition. You can do a sort of a wipe from say you know the door up right to the bomb down left, and by the time the wipe has happened, the new scene has sort of taken place and so on. So you can you can do an amazing number of of sort of subtle. Uh, in some cases, maybe not so subtle changes, just using the lights, and and also the the, the second thing about the, the the feature of changing the composition is that you're never subjecting 
any one segment of that audience of currently 180 degrees to you know the same picture the same picture the same picture right. like in one case the sort of the group that say over on the stage right side of the stage will be looking at the stage as though it's key lit from their direction the next scene it's backlit because the key is swung to the opposite side. Is it so, harder to design for a thrust stage than for a proscenium? Well, only in the sense that you've got to remember that the light has to go somewhere after it's lit the person. Right. And, and your, your platform and your sort of, as we call it, the gutter areas at the festival are, are where the light has to disappear. You can sometimes make light disappear like down a vom or sometimes out a door, but you, you have to consider that the light can't not end up somewhere after it's lit the person. Right. Whereas on the, the proscenium stage, you can actually light like across the stage so that the light disappears in the opposite wing. You can light from like a low angle up into the borders right. and it disappears. But you, you, you can't hide the light that way or the, the, the result of the light that way in the festival. So you are a little more challenged in some cases. But there's a, there's a huge range of possibilities. And that's why I said earlier that it's not the fact that it's limiting. It's the fact that if you learn the possibilities, you discover that you know, magic can happen on that space. And I think and you actually have to light the front of the actor as well as the back of the actor on that oh stage. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a full, effectively, it's a full three-dimensional thing. But, but in fact, I mean, good lighting generally will light in sort of, I mean, it's a three-dimensional person. So unless you're looking for a very unusual effect, like sort of the fact that there's a whole lineup on the stage of a proscenium house and you're lighting just from the footlights, right. and it's therefore sort of very unidirectional and so on, uh, you're generally looking at a situation where you're trying to emphasize the three-dimensionality of the actor anyway.